Hello and welcome to another episode of Drive-In Double Feature Podcast. I'm Nathan. Hi, I'm Ryan. This is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week every Tuesday and Thursday. And this Tuesday, we're talking about Cast a Deadly Spell from 1991, directed by Martin Campbell. This movie stars Fred Ward, and that was our main reason to actually pick are two movies coming up this week because unfortunately Fred Ward did pass away recently, which is a really sad death. And we wanted to pay a little bit of a tribute to him on the show. Yeah. I actually remember him from a lot of different movies. Like, I mean, the main one would probably be Tremors. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he plays in the movie with Kevin Bacon with the giant worms. And I actually remember him from uh, the right stuff as well yeah with yeah. the the astronaut movie he plays one of the astronauts in there and also uh my mom really likes the movie big business big with business. uh <laughs> i've never the, even heard of this <laughs> that's with uh bet midler and lily tomlin but they play oh. uh two sets of twins that were separated at birth so they think that they're sisters yeah. but really they're twins because they have identical twins on the other side that's that's um, funny uh, because uh, I've seen that poster. <laughs> I've seen that poster, but I didn't know that was the name of the movie or that he yeah. was in it. Yeah, he plays one of the one of the twins as love interests. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, Name, gotcha. na- Named Rune. Rune. He looks like a Rune. Fred Ward looks like somebody who'd have like a weird name, I, I, just right. like. <laughs> A movie coming up soon uh but but he's great i like him a lot no he's great he's fun he's a very versatile actor that's what i like about him he can be in so much but i think his best roles are more in comedic stuff i i think he plays re- comedy really well um not that i love this movie but i did grow up watching joe dirt and i hate to say that's what i know him most from <laughs> oh no is joe dirt because i used to watch that movie religiously tremors another Do you still movie. watch that movie religiously no i haven't i haven't seen joe dirt in forever <laughs> i haven't even seen the sequel um that they did oh, that's on. the best one that's the best one of the, oh, I tri- bet. Of the yeah of the trilogy <laughs> <laughs> well soon to be trilogy maybe, maybe well, let's fingers, hope. fingers crossed is crackle steven still even around to make a third one no i i don't know uh, I guess, I guess we'll figure that out. But maybe Discovery Plus. <laughs> Discovery Plus, yeah, yeah. It's like a like a documentary look at rednecks, if only. But Fred Ward wouldn't return. How unfortunate! It's ruined. Uh, was he? Well, we don't even know if he was in the second one. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting we're getting a little off off track. Um, but yeah. So, Cast the Deadly Spell, nineteen ninety one. It was an HBO movie. Um, so it is a made-for-TV movie, um, but it has that HBO class, you know. It, it has a, There's something about HBO movies from the 90s. They have a very particular look and feel to them because I, I grew up on HBO. Like, there was times in my life where my family had HBO. <laughs> yeah, I brag about it. But no, I feel like I always watched, like, that's how I watched the Ernest movies. I watched Crashbox on there all because of HBO, but I never even heard of Cast a Deadly Spell until like a year ago. So where did you hear about that? Cast a Deadly Spell? Um, I just, I was looking at a giant list of noir movies and I saw one, it was about a detective movie set in a magical world starring Fred Ward. You know, it ca- it catches your attention. Yeah, because I mean, you wouldn't think of this movie traditionally when you think of like the great film the wars of all time but no I, I i do know what you're saying though about hbo movies just having that certain quality to it even now they especially like in the late 2000s i remember they made like a bunch of biopics all yes. the time like i remember watching i think like al pacino made like three or four of them it was yeah. he made he made the Dr. Kevorkian one, Philip Glass, or Phil mm-hmm. Spector, I mean. That's and, right. I remember uh, the Phil Spector one. Um, he did a lot of other ones, though. Yeah. But I, I they remade, like, made, like, Grey Gardens at one point. Oh, that's right. Drew Barrymore and Jessica Lange. Yeah, yeah. So they, they were doing a bunch of weird stuff over there at HBO for a little bit. And they still kind of do. Well, yeah, it's, it's a TV movie, but... They they spent some money on this one. No, no, it, it does no, it doesn't look cheap at all. I, I totally agree. I think there's um 
at first I was a little worried. At first I was like, okay, <laughs> this is a little, this is a little cheesy, a little goofy. But then I think it really shines with like the puppet and when the creatures show up. The creatures in this look awesome. They're really cool. That's what I'm going to say. The animatronics that they got for these puppets were look really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I like that they were okay with making it silly. They it definitely didn't take itself seriously. Like. There's like little critters. They look like critters from the movie Critters. Uh, they call them like uh, gremlins and they just look like goofy little animatronics, but they were really cool. I haven't seen Critters, but I've seen yeah. gremlins. Yes, I've seen gremlins as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, yeah, well, that's what I like. I, Cause at first it starts out pretty serious. And then the, the part that kind of sold me on this movie was, uh, one character tries to kind of betray one of the other ones, like giving them like a fake object, like a fake book. Like that's the whole plot is they're going after the Necronomicon. And mm-hmm. one guy kind of like bamboozles them and gives them a fake one. So they confront the guy into a bathroom and they make like this, there's like all these little shreds of like newspaper and they turn it into a tornado. And this guy dies by getting, caught in this whirlwind of papers and he just gets paper cut to death yeah, he gets paper cut to death and the dude that like does this to him he's just like weighing himself on one of those like truck stop scales that like tells you like your future then no care in the world that the dude's getting paper cut to death around yeah him. um uh- which I was going to say in that washroom scene, have, did you notice like in all those old movies, have you ever been in one of those restrooms where they have that, like nasty towel hanging from like, the, the paper dispenser or whatever no i have never been in a restroom like that i don't think but what are they supposed to do with that thing are they just supposed to just wipe their hands and just it's got like a, a thousand different people's like dirty yeah. wet hands on there I, I don't get it because like you literally wash your hands just to put your towel put your hands on the towel that hundreds of other people have used it's it's really gross well that's i don't understand i'm like i don't i i see those in movies all the time so that's why i was like i wonder like what the point of that <laughs> is supposed to be it seems really counterproductive mm-hmm. uh no i mean yeah i mean like we talked about this before what was what was hygiene like back in those days was fred ward stinking up the place everywhere he walked we don't know uh- well, come on, Nathan. That's ten years. That's the '30s. This is the '40s. Now oh, people yeah. are starting. People are starting to smell a little good. Yeah, people Dove, came back Dove, from World War II fresher. <laughs> Dove yeah. soap has been around. Maybe <laughs> yes. I don't. <laughs> Whatever uh, the Irish Spring. Irish Spring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, star our detective, right? Fred Ward. I really like him in this movie. I think this movie plays his strengths up well, which is kind of like the hardened action star that's really good with one-liners, because this dude has so many one-liners, so many zingers. It's it's pretty great. I I like this movie. It was a good movie. That was a good movie, yeah. yeah. I liked it. It's a it's a hidden gem. It really is. Yeah, I mean, like I I mean, because despite the magic scenes, it feels like a, like a new A, like it's it's filmed like in a new perspective for like a film noir. So it feels like a newer movie, even though it is set in the forties, but it does have that kind of film noir tone to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Um, it has that film noir tone and it does it well. I mean, it even has like the femme fatale who is uh, Julianne Moore in a, like, I think this is her fourth role ever, like very, very early role for her. Um, Fun fact, I guess, is uh, later Fred Ward and Julianne Moore would be in Robert Altman's shortcuts together, like very pivotal stuff together. I think we bring up Robert Altman a lot on this show, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I I remember them in shortcuts, um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, we should do a Robert Altman maybe at some point. Yeah, I I love Robert Altman, so that that would be perfect. Um, Like early Robert Altman. (laughs) Yeah, early Robert Altman. I mean, heck, Popeye, that was a failure. And I think that would be cool to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Julianne Moore is good in this, you know? The, there's the signs that she's going to go on to do really great things from here. Yeah, I I always admired her. I thought she's been good in a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, for the longest time, I felt like she never really got her due, so to speak. But then... Yeah. And then eventually she was given Best Actress for Still Alice, but um, 
like I said, for the longest time, I was just like, man, she's just been kind of chugging along and she hasn't really, not, nothing really big's ever happened for her, but I think she's had a really good career. Yeah, yeah, she's she's got a lot of great roles. Like, uh, that's the thing. She's an actress that does a lot of work. She does so many movies, um, but I feel like she always puts in a pretty good performance in all of them. My favorite role of hers has uh, been from Boogie Nights. I, that's, I would say that too. Boogie Nights, she's amazing in Boogie Nights. So that's definitely... Uh, her best role and then uh, Magnolia she has the least important storyline in that movie but she's really good in that as well oh yeah yeah so my biggest thing was um, I I know this is coming a little fast with the ending Um, what it but what did you think about um, the finale of this movie that's probably one of my favorite parts of this movie was the last 15 minutes it was good I so I mean his character's name is Henry Phillips Lovecraft, I think yes, is what. Yeah. So I mean it's HP Lovecraft. So the the main sort of plot is that these evil cultists are trying to bring Cthulhu back to life. Yes, yeah. Uh, the if you're a Lovecraft fan, it's it's all there for you. So Yeah. Uh, uh the the thing I that was a little gross was uh so the uh, so the main client who turns out, spoiler alert, he turns out to be a cultist, but, mm-hmm. and he was trying to get Fred Ward to get the Necronomicon so that way they can summon Cthulhu mm-hmm. and he was going to sacrifice his virgin daughter. And, yeah. and at the end of the movie, uh, they tried to sacrifice her, but it turned out that Cthulhu didn't want to take her because she wasn't a virgin anymore. Yeah. And it turned and it turned out that Fred Ward's police friend uh, slept with her, took her virginity, even though she's a 16-year-old girl and he's married. Yeah, uh, it, it felt awful hearing it, but I thought it was pretty damn funny. I, I don't know, because like Fred Ward's over here, like, because, you know, the dude slept with a 16-year-old and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. And Fred Ward's like, they're going to make a statue for you. They're going <laughs> to praise you everywhere for is it not for stopping the end of the world. I thought it was a funny way to handle that. It, it was it was clever. I'll, I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. It, it, still, I was like, ooh. But then at the same time, I was like, okay, okay. They're they're trying to make it. They're they're acknowledging it's not. it wasn't a good thing he did, but oh, in terms yeah. of the movie... In terms of the movie, it helped like the plot and everything. It was a fun little twist. It because it, it, it does keep you questioning the whole time. Um, all throughout the movie, I felt like personally, I wasn't connecting the pieces. I was just like Fred Ward, where jumping from one clue to the next, and I didn't quite know what was going on. I didn't know that Dad was going to end up being the bad guy. Personally, I didn't know there was like this whole plot line with um with a cross dresser named Lily, um, who's kind of in hiding it takes you a lot of different places and it's and it, and it never is boring. It's always really interesting doing some cool stuff. The magic is not really overdone, I would say, because uh, for there's some points where they don't even mention magic or show anybody using magic. And then all of a sudden it just kind of like brings back like, Oh, this is a magical movie. Like there's one scene where they're in a house and all of a sudden it starts raining, but it's just raining blood outside. Yeah, and they don't really talk about that. I like that a lot because you know for sure if this was made today, it would be so full of magic. Everybody, everything in the background would be doing some type of magic. It would be the forefront. But I really like that, that our main character doesn't use magic. He wants to stay in the real world. And when it pops up, it's pretty cool. And I think that keeps it charming, right? When it shows up, it's like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Not overdone. Yeah, and there's like one where a guy was trying to light a cigarette and he just kind of flicks his fingers and a little mm-hmm. bit of flame comes out of his finger and lights a cigarette. That, that little stuff like that, I think it's kind of neat. I like that. Um, I really like um, just the fact that someone wrote runes on a receipt at a diner trying to kill Fred Ward and just reading that would kill you and they had to like stop themselves from reading it. And I was like, oh, that's really neat. That was actually probably my favorite scene in the whole movie was that diner scene. Cause like you said, they, they read the little runes and this, that's where like the little monster shows up. It's this goat head looking type of monster yeah. and it's, it's got the skulls and it comes out of a pot. Like it just materializes inside of a cooking pot. And then it just mauls this one guy's whole body. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and once again, the animatronics on that thing is really cool because he rises out of the pot and he's like, he just looks all, he looks really gross and they trap him in the freezer. Um, you know what else looked really cool? There was a werewolf scene for like, it was like almost like a comedy gag whenever they have the werewolf in the police station. Um, he's like howling and stuff. He's like, don't, there's no use in calling your friends now. Uh, <laughs> just silly. Yeah. yeah just that didn't advance the plot. It just showed the, the police captain just interrogating a werewolf. Uh, and then Fred Ward comes in. He's like, Oh, you don't want to sit there. You might get hair on your suit. You know, yeah. Just, just silly little things. Uh, I don't know it, that that I would describe this movie as like a charming movie overall. Like, you know, it was just really charming everything going into it. Yeah. It's kind of like if you mix the video game, LA Noir with like Harry Potter, maybe. That's actually a really good description of this. Yeah. I, I would totally agree with that. There's other little gags in there too, that I liked where uh, he's trying to get information about, one of the suspects so he goes to like this open house looking thing uh, and he's he's talking to this one lady and she's mentioning this one guy he's like oh yeah he was performing this amazing trick he was going to lift the empire state building he's like oh yeah what happened to him oh it fell on him he's like oh <laughs> poor guy yeah he just died <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I like that um actually i thought that whole bit was good because it brings up i guess zombies are a thing um, but they're more used like slaves in this. Like you enslave the zombies and they just do all your building, like bidding. And they, they were building houses in this air in like this area. Yeah. Well, they, it's kind of like the more traditional term for zombie, because mm-hmm. if you watch like those zombie movies from like the forties or the fifties, it wasn't this traditional uh, decomposing body type of thing. Cause I remember I forget which movie, but there was a movie I saw where a character was a zombie, but they looked like a regular person, but they were just under this hypnotic spell type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what it seemed like because I forget what country, I think they said it was from like, didn't they say like the bodies were from like the West Indies or something like that? I think so. I think that's what the dude says. Somewhere other than America, but that's just kind of what I assume to be like that voodoo culture. Because even at the beginning of the movie, uh, Fred Ward's landlord, who she's kind of funny in this movie too, mm-hmm. um, she does like like a voodoo ritual at the top of the of the building, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of yeah. It, it's more yeah. It's exactly like that. It's a little more like voodoo. And these characters kind of or that character pops up sometimes. There, there's also another character that pretends to be Fred Ward's lawyer. Um, I really thought that character was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's what's interesting about this is it doesn't just take like one type of magic and throws it over everything. It's literally like all kinds of magic. You got like voodoo, like spells, Lovecraftian stuff. It's like all there you know it's just very open season with it i know it made me think i was like i really wanted this world to be explored more and it kind of made me want to feel like i I know there is a sequel which looking at which is kind of crazy uh they Mm -hmm. they had a sequel to this and (laughs) dennis hopper is recast as fred ward which is so weird Uh, dennis hopper really must have been in a low point in his career to be like the fred ward replacement right like what do you think do you think they couldn't get Fred Ward or do you think that they were like, Oh, we can get Dennis Hopper instead of Fred Ward. Let's that, do that. That might've been it because I mean, they even upped a director as, as far as like at that time, because it's Paul Schrader to is directing the sequel, which I, one of my all time favorite directors. Uh, I, I actually really want to see the sequel. I haven't heard good things about it though. It's called witch hunt, but I mean, it's just interesting for, Den- uh, there's even returning characters in in the sequel <laughs> so they replace oh, the hopper but they bring back some characters yeah well i it, like i said i really wish we could get more of these type of things and it made me wish like there was like a video game or something like that where yeah. you can kind of like explore these types of things yeah, but I, there is a game like it um wolf among us i don't know if you ever played it um where yeah you, yeah you play the werewolf detective in the magic world that's kind of like this but you know i wish this universe was fleshed out more this one I specifically guess, yeah i guess i'm more thinking of like that noir type of setting because that's kind of set in the modern world type of true, thing but true. it is like a no noir tone though so yeah another funny scene which i liked was uh 
it was a scene where his uh, landlord keeps like pushing him like you're late with the rent money you're late and he's like all right i gotta go out and earn some money and she's like oh while you're out hand out my business cards because she owns a dance studio too that Mm -hmm. and uh it's funny because when he goes and tries to uh, talk to this one guy it's like this big burly looking mechanic he's like here here's my card and he accidentally gives him the dancing like business card <laughs> yeah and he's like and the guy's like never cared too much for dancing too many veins on my legs <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh- I re- one one scene that was kind of dumb but made me laugh was whenever those little gremlins get into like a hotel room and this old dude just starts shooting them like blowing up this hotel room shooting holes in the walls and stuff but I, <laughs> I like this guy's makeup because he they like put makeup on him to look old but also like really scary like his face was like sunken in and like veiny it was uh, something I like his because he was like, oh, you know, all we brought back in World One War One was the clap, but in World War Two we brought back gremlins. You know, it's just <laughs> stupid. Yeah, it was, but yeah, it was it was really good. You could really tell like the direction was in there, and we haven't really yeah. touched upon this, but this was directed by Martin Campbell. Yeah, future Casino Royale director and and uh, and Goldeneye. And Goldeneye, yeah, that's yeah. right which is in, insane. I do not see signs of James Bond. I see a sign of a good director, but nothing like those movies really here. <laughs> you mean you can't see Fred Ward as James Bond, which that might be what we were talking about next time. Bye. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, um, but no, I do not see him as James Bond. I definitely see him as a detective, um, uh, like a Philip Marlowe type, you know, uh, long goodbye kind of style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's. I think it's a. It's one that I'm really glad that we watched, and not one I probably would have ever taken the time to watch if we hadn't done this. So yeah, no, and it's very easy to get. I don't think I said it at the end of the last episode, but it it's on HBO Max, and it'll probably stay there because it is HBO, and I think it's worth a watch. It's an hour and a half, a really easy, fun watch. It, I recommend it. I think it's a really cool movie. Same here. But yeah, I think that about covers it for Cast a Deadly Spell, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Well, then we'll, we'll wrap that. We'll close the Necronomicon on that one. Um, and we're going to move on to another Fred Ward classic. And what's that going to be, Brian? Well, Nathan, what we're going to be talking about on Thursday is Remo Williams' The Adventure Begins. Oh, and just beginning huh yeah well, it makes it sound like there's going to be a lot of them but <laughs> yeah. um, anyway that is free on tubi so you watch along with us and be prepared for thursday's episode yeah yeah be prepared for that also um before we go i do want to say that we do have a patreon it's patreon.com slash drive and double feature podcast and we're actually going to be starting putting some exclusive content on patreon so if you want to hear any of that go over there it's not going to be any main episodes but it's going to be us still talking a little bit about movies a bunch of different things so definitely subscribe and check that out um also tweet at us at didf pod we're over on twitter and email us at drive in double feature podcast at gmail.com if you have any recommendations or anything like that. But until next time. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>